Hi, we're here in IE Gallery, and this is Mike Scott. He's our artist for this month and possibly part of June. And he's from, he lives now on Woodby Island, but he's originally from Oxford, England, and he's a wonderful artist turning burls of wood. And um, he's here to just talk about some of his work today. So, hi, Mike. Hi. Hi, this is, um, let's walk over and look a little bit at a couple of the pieces sure. here. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Um, so, as a background, I started turning about 35 years ago and was doing basic stuff for selling at craft fairs and, and slowly developed um, a style that was kind of archaeological, antique looking uh, pieces that uh, utilizing burls and getting myself then into exhibitions all over the place. Um, and I started then working exclusively with burls in England, oak and elm burls. But over here I'm pretty much restricted to madrone and um, maple, which are great. Is that so because of like legal? That's because there's nothing else around here. Oh, okay. Easily available. It's all local. Yeah. So here's a piece that was a piece of maple burl, and um, it was pretty old and kind of cracked. I turned that and then scorched it to get the underlying color of black and applied a milk paint, which are very muted colors, uh, like old fashioned milk paints they're called. Uh, rub that on and then rub it back and the black comes out. Uh, give it a feeling of a patina. Ooh, beautiful. Uh, here's then, another one that's done in a similar fashion. Uh, that was a maple. And it kind of, does it kind of fall apart where the, um, you get that live edge like they call or whatever it's, is that what creates that edge? Well that's, yeah, that is the outside of the tree underneath mm. the bark. And a burl is a, like a wart, it's a cluster of cells trying to push out so each mm. one of those potentially could be a branch, but mm. in a burl they don't ever make it as branches, they just cluster in a burl. Mm. And they always have wonderful swirly grain. Now this piece was sandblasted, it was fairly rotten, so it etches out the grain beautifully to give a nice texture. And, and then I applied the white um, milk paint and rubbed it back to, mm. to get that effect. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then sometimes this piece has metal in it, which I love. Sometimes you mix it up and put used found metal too. Right. I do collect metal objects and things to mostly circular shaped gears and rings and so on to in introduce with my work if it's appropriate. And this, is, is this also um, this, Madrona? I think this was Madrona. Um, and again, the the colouring, unless it had been highly polished, the colouring of it would have been pretty dull, so I used my rust finish effect on that. Beautiful. Should go over to this little island over here. Yeah, this, this one uh, is one of my favourite pieces. Uh, I really love the voids that go deep into the um, inside of the vessel. And this reminds me of the times when I lived in Anglesey in Wales and used to explore the beaches and go into the caves, the little mm. caves there, which were always appealed to me. Mm. So um, the, the Madrone root um, is, as it grows downwards and has this kind of burl uh, appearance, grows around the soil and the stones, just like any other root. Um, so you have to dig it out, and that's what gives these voids, and it, it's a, oh, yeah. a complete pain. But, and uh, then do you in the end, the effects are worth it. So is it charred inside? And then it was just turned, um, spent ages digging out the soil, and then sandblasted it. Huh. And then because it looked a little dull in, mm -hmm. in overall, I did these highlights of uh, white oil paint, mm -hmm. to give it the, the idea that it's just snowed. It's like a canyon. 
Yeah, it's gorgeous. That one's called a light dusting of snow, which is really appropriate. And it's got this um, added dimension of that spike through it. Right. Um, here's another example of, you know, when, you, when you're working with wood, each piece is so different. And I, I'm always resolved to try to get something out of it, whereas most people would look at that and say, oh, it's split. What do I do with it? You know, it, it's mm -hmm. um, if you uh, if you burn a piece thoroughly with that has splits and the splits kind of meld into the shape of it, and it seems perfectly appropriate and actually mm -hmm. delightful. Mm -hmm. So that's why certain pieces are just left black because it, it works with the the way the and wood is formed. Yeah, it's gorgeous, and that's got a rolled edge, and it's. It's charred and and then do you oil uh, or wax? I, well, in this case, I used a, a gesso, black gesso finish. Oh, okay. Just to give it a really deep black. Yeah, nice. Um, this guy here, um, over the years, I I started using a chainsaw on on the lathe. I was turning big vessels, and I found that by having a chainsaw mounted. On a jig, I could cut away sections, um, which allowed me to give an impression of an amphitheater. Wow! And so I've done a whole series of pieces over the years called amphitheaters, amphitheater series, and that's how it is done. Oh, is just yeah, with using the chainsaw. I remember those from past shows. Yeah. That's amazing the amount of control. So and then. Uh, so the wood, the burl is spinning on the lathe, and then you're but then, holding. But then that. it's holding it. It's stationary, and yes. I just move it by hand, and the chainsaw is bolted to oh. a jig. Wow. And this has an interesting underside, the, where the burl is left showing, oh, so you can see this, like a mountain range. Yeah, yeah. I didn't look at that that, that closely before. It's gorgeous. And these are big pieces compared to like, are, are these some of the larger pieces? You yeah, know? I've, I've uh, I had to leave behind some heavy duty equipment when I moved here 10 years ago. And it's only recently in the last couple of years that I've been able to reinforce the lathe that I have, rather than spending 10,000 bucks to get a new lathe. Yeah. I, um, I've modified Kim's lathe to enable me to do larger pieces and that's, that's great. pretty great. So. Could we look for a minute at this piece? Um, you showed me it earlier, the um, face form. Pick that up and talk a little bit about the okay. of paint. This piece uh, was a, a very nice piece of maple burl which mm -hmm. I turned. I had the voids in where the bark had been um, and I polished it and I wasn't happy with it. It's, it looked too similar to what everybody else does, and I decided to uh, attack it with a blowtorch, which oh. um, burning etches out the grain in an interesting way. So there's a texture on there, which allows you to then add layers of paint, and as you rub back into the texture, you get certain oh. aspects of it left behind. That's gorgeous. So and it's is got that a black. Milk paint it's also the milk muted yeah. milk paints and. Yeah. You can just see some yellow and green in there, and, and then there's a sort of rust-colored brown on top. And Beautiful. It's fun. It's something that, uh, you know, like I imagine painters do, they rub yes. layers of paint on. And it's very like painting, yeah. yeah. And I have to take you over to this piece for a minute because I've become very fond of this one since it's in the gallery. Um, this piece right. with the snail shell in it? Right. Or? Was that part of a snail shell in the middle? No, no, uh, no, that's just a, a nod to hold it oh, onto the base. It together. Um, but this was a piece of madrone, not like the other rough old stuff. This was fresh madrone, freshly cut, probably um, a bright pink mm. when it's first wow. cut. Oh, yeah. It's extraordinary color. Wow. Um, and I'd never turned it before, so I tried this turning it thin to see if it would, what sort of shape it would go, because Madrona does move and, and warp and distort extremely, uh, extremely when it's cut. And that was the result. When I turned this, it was a perfect hemisphere, hmm. except for the kind of live edge that I've left on the top. Mm -hmm. And it, that's how, 
how much it's moved. Mm. And so I just wanted to do a black, black white kind of contrast. The outside mm -hmm. was scorched and blackened, and then the inside with milk paint. And the base was a piece of maple that I think I cut off with. Mm. Well, let's go over, and since you're talking about these two tone pieces too, can we look at these two? The, right. I'll eventually turn the other blue one around, but this is also an Yeah, so piece. this was a small piece of maple. I, I had the idea to make a disc shape. I've done a lot of disc shapes over the years. I really like that form. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the contrast between mm -hmm. that side and the, the blackened side. Again, you can see how you get a texture from scorching it. It's mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's really beautiful. And that is the maple. That yeah, that's said. maple. Yeah. Yep. Well, and then um, this one, I'll have to maybe have you slide it out from the table okay. for a second. Okay, I should okay. have done that before. Um, this is also a discus form. You can, okay, yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, gorgeous. So that's the natural color of maple. That's the only well, apart from that one over there that has a polished maple surface. It's, it's beautiful, but it's so common that mm -hmm. uh, I try to avoid doing, doing too much. Mm -hmm. That's uh, obvious, but I like the, the uh, cave formation in there again. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, it's a complete contrast. I burnt it to get the texture and then use the do you want to turn it a little bit slightly more the other way there and then we pick up the, the color from the light that incredible blue yeah i like the, the, the fact that then you can display it um, different ways yeah. according to your mood, mood. of the day yeah. <laughs> i can come up close for a second and then maybe we can move on to that wall piece that where we sure. started and Maybe we'll squeeze in one or two more. Oh, let's squeeze in one or two before we go to the wall piece because, but that's a nice place to end. Uh, we have, we still have, let's take a quick look at the big white bowl here. You go ahead. Okay. Um, this was the first really big lump of uh, madrone that I put on the lathe after I'd modified it and it was pretty scary having that rotating. Uh, apart from the fact that it got this huge void here from where it had been soil or bark or whatever mm -hmm. and so it was slightly out of balance and I couldn't, I had to leave it thick because if I made it any thinner it would have just fallen apart it's only the fact that it's, it's uh, thick and heavy that keeps it together mm -hmm. um, and that was another one with, with the use of milk paint and rubbing it back to give it mm -hmm. a patina. And it, to me it's a, an ancient vessel that's been dug up out of a, an archaeological dig somewhere. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it does. Like you're getting that sense of antiquity. I've always been uh, attracted to when you're in museums going to looking at pottery, how they take shards of pottery and sort of patch them together so you get a sense of what the original pot would have looked like. Oh yeah. Yeah, they do. Some people sometimes ask if there, some of these are ceramics. Right. Um, should we take a, just a quick peek? I want people to see just for a minute the variety of, um, because these are different from the rest of the exhibit. Yeah. So I, I like to play around with fun pieces with little surprises of color. That's a, mm -hmm. I like this form very much. It's very weighty mm -hmm. and, and uh, pleasant. Yeah, they have a little futuristic shape. Yeah. Um, kind of spaceship like space shape. Uh, they're playful. Yes. That's and I've seen some of your work that hasn't been in the gallery yet that's very uh, playful. Uh, uh, that's more metal combinations too. Found objects. Yeah. Let's take a quick look over at the tall red pot. And oh, we should also look at the wide bowl here too for a second. Yeah, that's another big, nice big piece of maple burl on the underside. You can yeah. see where I've scorched the little, what's left of the burl. And an, another feature I've done over the years with my work is to complete this, where it's broken away 
a bit like when they repair mm -hmm. ceramics and, uh, that you find in museums and mm -hmm. um, uh, utilizing a found metal mm -hmm. ring. And uh, then these are actually individually drilled. And then these are all my, my uh, piercing texture, which honeycomb, oh, which is all so individually. Cool. Yeah. Did you spend much time in museums as a child? Or? No, not as a child, but when I started as an artist, Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I used the museums as a source of inspiration. And then tall red pot here in the tall corner? Tall red pot, another piece of madrone, actually turned in two pieces and joined. Oh, really? So that I could hollow it out, because I couldn't get a tool oh. in there to hollow it. And you can't actually see the join, but it is. And is that charred first? And then it was burnt, probably sandblasted, and... Um, and then... And then that beautiful... Paint, yeah. Pinky color, coral. Coral, yeah, that's a good word for it. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it just came to me. And I love this little beauty, beauty yeah, here too. Yeah, that, that really looks like ceramic, I think. Yeah. Except for the Except splits, for which then you're kind of questioning yeah. why it's got those. Yeah, yeah, that's sweet. That's also Madrona, or Madrone. And then we can take a minute and finish up with where we started here with the... Um, Giant wall piece. That was a. And that's a maple, is that right? That's maple. Um, the story behind that was that I, I was over at the timber supplier in Fort Townsend, um, Eden Saw Woods, and oh, they okay. they have a lot of burls from time to time, and I saw that and I, I thought, aha, this is a, an opportunity, and it looked in good shape. It looked like it was hole and everything was great. I took it home, started turning it, and it's, it was all rotten kind of inside. So I, I knew that I couldn't get a finish with it, but mm. I, I knew that it would, if it was sandblasted, it would give me a texture that looked like earth um, work. So I, I, I ended up using a rust finish on it because it, with the combination of the cogs, it had the impression to me of something that had been sitting on the seabed for many years and had been dug up. Oh, gorgeous, um, yeah. yeah. It does. It looks like something that could have even fallen off of an sh old ship or something. Yeah, yeah. And then oh. to that capital, when I just finished it, Kim came back from the beach with this spark plug. Wow. Oh, I didn't notice that's a spark plug in the middle. It's an old spark plug that literally was found on the beach embedded with all this uh, sand and gravel, which I incorporated in it. That's beautiful. Well, we're going to be here open. Um, we don't know when we can open our doors publicly, but we'll hopefully, um, I can right now, let people in one at a time by appointment. If they call 360-488-3458, or if they uh, email us, at ieedisonlaw at gmail.com and I will post those numbers at the end of this video. So that was awesome, Mike. Thanks so much for visiting Thank you. us.